only thing that's going to guarantee that is, um, you know, the short, you know, amount of time we're going to have this material available in PDF in the hands of the people which are going to be attending those lectures. Um, I I took I took the the job to do this. One is because uh, Marcelo asked and. Uh, and he also gave me something else, which is, you know, the room and the space to do all of this and for free, which was uh, the only chance that we could make, you know, tech happen in Brazil. And uh, so I really sold my, my soul to the devil at that point. <laughs> and, <laughs> but... Uh, Who's the devil? <laughs> 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 we just start to record, guys. <laughs> But, uh, but, but I, you know, in, in, in retrospect, I, I, I think I, you know, I, I can even change my mind. I took the challenge because uh, it gives me the opportunity to break with some old paradigms in publication in mathematics and show some examples on how things, how a few things could be really done. I mean, mathematicians are sort of married to certain strange rules in publication. Um, the most horrendous of all of them is citation by alpha. Do you know what citation by alpha is? I guess probably everybody. So they, everybody cites on their papers by LI07 and, and close bracket, you know, and AJ09 and, and, and close bracket and so forth and so forth. And then citations, you know, this was like that. I guess Nelson can tell me why. Where's Nelson? Nelson's not here. All right. Yeah. But, but was this propagate was this propagated by Bib Tech or not? No, it existed. It existed before. I, I, I used to blame this on the fact that this 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 style was called Alpha. And then it came came first on the list of styles. <laughs> so you, you would say, you know, I wanna check all the styles, I said, let me use alpha, you know. <laughs> And everybody put this thing, and this thing is extremely common. Uh, to come to a point where you open an AMS journal, and to this day, that's all there is. And, uh, and there are some journals of the society that use this as standard citation system. I said, it, it, and citations have, a, the way to cite has evolved a lot over the last 20 years. You know, uh, the, the way you integrate your citations on your, on your text. And I wanted to do something where you could use a full name and have piece of it as being the citation and piece of it being the part that you're using the text and weave the text and the citation together. And talked to the boss and the boss said, this is, looks really great. <laughs> so we just jumped into it. And uh, the result that you see is, you know, um, something like this. Um, two seminal constructions of Murray and von Neumann, and then you have the two particular citations, 1936 and 1937. So you can click on the name in order to get the first, and you can click on the second date in order to get the second. And the full, um, the, the, the citation is whiffed into the middle of the text. Um, some of the authors cried full when, when they saw this. Some of the authors really embraced it and said, I want to change my style, I want to change my paper a little bit in order to embrace the citation method. It's really cool because with this kind of stuff in here, you have a very l small target to click on. If you are on an iPad and you want to click on the citation logic to be thrown into the citation, you have a small target. And, and sometimes you have even a citation which is numeric which is the other one, where you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and each one of those is a separate link, and there's absolutely no way that you can know where you're clicking or even click correctly to get to the place where you are. With this, there's no doubt. You can open this on an iPad, you know, it's, it's completely, the de dexterity is at a maximum. You know, you can open it up and click and be right on the citation. And not only that, you know, um, you can, click on the citation here, be thrown on top of the citation back in there, and the bibliography is sort of rich with links provided by Math Reviews, Zentralblatt, uh, DOIs, archive links, and you can just choose and navigate to your heart's content and get to, the, uh, to where you are. 
Um, this has been possible for about 15 years and uh, still not used by most journals which are produced today. And it's hard to know why. Yeah, the main reason is if you have names, they will take you probably one, one page or 200 pages more. So the name is taken. Right, right. So, so as soon as he publishes the Aquarius Journal and the Control, uh, yeah, no, the, the, the name citation will agree. I mean, that extends the paper. By why, you know, a linking a bibliography and making a bibliography useful. I mean, you can click on, you know, on the title of this paper here and be thrown, you know, right where the paper is. You may not have the right to see this paper because it may belong to Springer. <laughs> but... <laughs> But, but it's very useful on an app. Exactly. Yeah. No, that, well, well, I mean, your rights are your rights. You know, and, and if you are a mathematician, you pro most likely you have the right to read it. You are licensed by your institution, so you can just go ahead, set up your iPhone or set up your iPad properly and read it. Now, why this is not done, it, b it bugs me. Why, why is it not done, Tom? Tom? Why this is not done? Do you know? This? Yeah. Time consuming, yeah. Well, even yeah. adding DOIs to DOIs to articles is such a pain in you in a way. Okay. Um, I remember you would say that because certainly in my subject area, they automated all of, all of that stuff, all the citations are checked automatically and it's all, that's all yeah. taken straight out of Word files and done but automatically. But these tools are either not, not quite quality or very expensive for the publisher. Oh, I, I'm going to be talking about these tools in about three minutes. So it's three minutes into my day. So let's go. So the other things are, you know, there are journals right now using computer modern fonts. There are journals using, you know, stuff that is extremely hard to read on an iPad, extremely hard to read on an iPhone. And uh, I wanted to see if I could break a little bit with that as well and a few other things. Um, one other thing that I, we had a problem with was uh, taking um, quotes from publishers to print these volumes. Uh, they are spread over f f a four-volume um, four collection, about you know, 1,500 pages each, and uh, and several publishers uh, wanted to put a cap on the number of color pages. And I said, you know, if you're really not willing to print in color, mathematics, which is made in the year 2018, don't bother to apply. And uh, we, so we selected from a smaller pool, but uh, the books are being fully printed in color. And, uh, and I think that uh, if they continue to refuse to print in color, they would only make the electronic file being even more useful. Um, so um, the challenges of taking care of this are tr horrendous. I mean, one of the things that you don't see immediately when you see this number of pa papers is that uh, there were 42 total auto citations there were 42 citations of the book itself that you needed to have it paginated in order to fill in the BibTeX files of those papers in order to re-PDF them and repaginate the whole thing. So changing, you know, a simple request from the publisher to change the pagination of the opening pages, you know, from Roman to whatever, you know, and moving up the number of pages by one, it would be a job that would take automatically about eight hours to process. I didn't use Arara, I should. <laughs> <laughs> you would have saved me a lot of time. But to repaginate all these volumes, generate the electronic book file, generate the paper files, and repaginate the, 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 all the BibTeX files and so forth, it was a sort of unautomated process of about eight hours. So, um, <clears throat> so the way that uh, I try to sort of model this up was uh, we had to get all these papers. The papers were all over the place. Uh, my, a, a guy that works with me, uh, Zumbeltzis Aola says, has said about a couple years ago that the next production system that we built would be in Luatec uh, because there are so many needs for these little things and then you end up spending so much more time in doing it that it will be uh, advantageous to do it in Luatec. And at that time, I said, eh, you know, production, you need to be a little bit conservative. You need to be able to produce stuff that people produced in PDF tech, you know. 
And he finally convinced me and we went and I have not looked back ever. You know, it, it was a really right decision to do. And uh, we have been able to build spellers, we have been able to build syntactic analyzers, you know, to check simple things like if the guy is using, you know, a verb in the plural with, with a noun in the singular, with a subject in the singular. Um, in English, that's fairly easy to do, even if you have mathematics in it, and catch a bunch of little errors with it, basically using Lua in, inside Lua Tech. And that has been really great for us. But we needed to get this mass of this form papers using all sorts of stuff and all sorts of source into some of a common format that would be able to be processed under common style. So the first thing that I was asked in the beginning was for me to provide a style, which I personally don't like, which is to provide a style for the conference. Because most people really can't fit in the style that you provide and then they end up trying to do all sorts of gimmicks to go around your style, and it's just a fight with certain papers, which is not worth it. Let whatever author do whatever he thinks. It, it's, it, the best thing to ask is use the article style, use plain article style and send the stuff in. And, then, and that's what we did. And then we received, and you know, of course, there were stuff that would run in PDF tech, there were stuff that won only in ZTech, there were stuff that would only run in Lua tech, there was a few, uh, only on Lua tech. And, uh, and we need to get this under a, sort of a common denominator. In order to get this in a common denominator, I sort of, you know, we classify the papers in four categories. Um, this is called divide and conquer, which is to sort of separate the first part, which is the metadata, and the second part, which is the preamble, the third part, which is content, and then biblio. In the metadata part, that's very easy. You know, the guy goes there and puts his name, puts the title of his paper, and so forth, and he, bound, and he submits his paper, and we have everything in the computer, we have everything in the database. I can export the database out of a complete set of metadata. You know, backslash author is equals to that, backslash first name is equals to that, backslash last name, backslash email, you know, I can deduce his affiliation from his email, I can deduce his address from his email, you know, and, and do the whole thing almost automatically and offer back to him, is this correct? And most people say, whoa, that's correct, blah, and that's it, and we're done. And uh, so most people will just type his email and have this form pre-filled for them at the submission time, and we done with this part. So instead of having, you know, your normal uh, title, you know, author, date, and maybe address, we would end up with having this huge list of metadata entries that goes all the way down to volume, thanks, and, and page number, starting page, ending page, and so forth, that I can use to compose DOIs and I can use for, for, other, for other stuff. And, and that part is literally taken down. So literally going over the paper and applying a sort of a divide and conquer. You know, in, in a Brazilian way, we say it's a hot soup, you start eating from the borders, you know, start dealing with the easy stuff first. And then we move over to the other pieces, you know, the other piece which is easy is the content. Because the content you really don't want to do a lot, you know, and if this guy stayed, you know, conservative, you can use his content almost the way it is. The only problem is the content really has a lot of, you know, subdivisions in here, which are the figures, you know, some people are using PS fig, some people are using stuff that uh, is not really healthy for you, and, uh, and you need to learn how to deal with it in order to do something really good. Um, figures with embedded fonts, which contradict the font that you're using for the book, and that need to be added and so forth. And then you start dealing with the two parts which are really tough, the preamble and the, and the bibliography. And the preamble, um, I don't have any particular order to pick up. Let's do preamble first. Um, first, we have the use packages, which are all over the place. I mean, first of all, let me tell you, 280 papers, there were people with preambles that ran pages and pages and pages and pages, and sometimes repeated itself three times, you know. 
you would be amazed at how many times you go there and you see the guy says, input Y fonts and says, let me take the stuff out of here. And, and you continue and, and he continues and continues because he's inputted like four times because he, he keeps copy and pasting and copy and pasting and doesn't even have control of the fingers when he's doing this. So the thing gets added many, many times. <laughs> so, um, we had to build a automatic facility to do this, and it was the first time uh, I remember once that, something that, I, that Frank told me uh, the very first time we met, which was a phrase that I keep um, written on top of my board, the only thing that parses tech is tech. And, and then, you know, if you try to parse tech with Pro, for example, you learn how hard it is to remove a package out of a, uh, out of a, a string of text which makes your source. There are more than 30 different cases that you, know, that you can use and you can write and you can break the lines and you can't expect line break, you can't expect the options to go with it and so forth. So we, we wrote a routine to remove the package. You know, like say, you say remove package graphics X it would go there and remove all the occurrences of the package graphics X out of that file and only that. And then we would move that entire copy into a subdirectory, process it, and compare the PDF with the PDF before. And if the PDF is the same, that package could be isolated and could be gone. And proceeding like this and iterating over every single package that the guy used you have a minimization which was beyond belief. It was already, you know, uh, a bright day after you see how much you could throw away. And literally going by package by package. Sometimes the process would take like four hours to process the entire one. You have to copy the whole thing over. You have to process the whole thing, and you have to compare the PDF. Sometimes you read a package, and the package causes an error. Sometimes you go and produces a different PDF file. And in that case, you know, you need that particular um, uh, package in there and so forth. And then proceed, clean up the whole thing. And the idea was to sort of have an, have an image of a, of a container where this paper would be sitting in this particular container and going through these operations. For example, the operation of minimization of, of, of the preamble. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. This is, I mean, first of all, uh, I, should, I should have said this at the very beginning. There's a whole suite of packages and software extensions that have been built for this pro project. I mean, we are, we are making sure that we, that we leave this to be useful for people later on. And all the packages that I'm mentioning here, with the rare exception of font packages and whatever, our free software that we're making available to everybody. So for example, the minimizer package is written in Python. Don't ask me why. <laughs> um, it's, um, it, it, you just write minimize and you say file name dot tech and it goes there and throws all the trash away and gives you a file which is minimal and produces exactly the same PDF file that you had before. And you have to use um, Tech Live 2018 because the PDF, uh, PDF and ZTech, which are PDF Tech and ZTech that are distributed with Tech Live 2017, does a funny thing about uh, embedding of fonts inside the PDF. It creates a random string in order to put the fonts inside. It, which makes it extremely hard to compare the two PDF files. <laughs> so, uh, so producing a PDF file with Tech Life before to Tech Life 17, it was not a determinist uh, operation. And uh, uh, right now it is. It's being fixed and it is. Can what I about the uh -huh. question? Yes, sure. Uh, having done this throwaway, mm -hmm. do you have any statistics about what kind of packages got used and what kind of packages got absolutely... I do. Uh, that would be very interesting. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I have, uh, you know, uh, I, I try to separate the, you know, the, 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 the sources in sort of some level of literacy, you know, on, on LaTeX. And, uh, and the packages which are used by literate programmers and the packages which are used by middle 
level in the packages which are used by illiter programmers. And uh, they are extremely similar. Some of these preambles have existed for over 30 years, you know, and they are, you know, completely <laughs> nonsense, but they've been passed generation to generation. There is a guy in Russia and a guy in the U.S. and a guy in France which are using exactly the same preamble, you know, wow. one in geometry, another one in... in the same guy. No, no, no. <laughs> Raw data about this, I would like to have it to analyze. Uh huh. Cool. Cool. Yeah, you have. We are analyzing. <laughs> uh? We have methods to analyze DNA from different places, and I'm eager to look at preambles. Yeah. From cool. Places. So then, you know, but 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 you but you, I didn't finish answering your question. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> so so everything is everything will be available. You know, in 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 packages which are going to be addendum to his packages and you know our own packages and so forth and will be freely available. Okay. So, Release dates? huh? Release dates? Oh, the uh, you know the minimizer is already released. Uh, some of this stuff you know, we need to chat. We need to have a private chat to, to agree on a few things. But uh, but the minimizer is already out there, uh, which is which. This particular part deals with the easier part, you know, the part that's out there, which is the packages. Mm -hmm. But there's more than the packages in the preamble, which are the, you know, the definition of the commands made by the own author. Oh. You know, the new commands and the renew commands and so forth. And on that one, I have spent, I literally, I have spent about a month thinking about how to solve this problem, and which is also a huge problem. Because there are recursive definitions, there are double definitions for the same thing, and there are humongous amount of stuff hidden in there. And, uh, and at some point, I, you know, and you go in there, I said, you know, let me look at it and see how much of it is really used. And you, and you end up finding out like 1% is used. Less than 1% of that thing is used. So I went, built a strategy which was to comment everything from top to down, and start processing the file, taking 1% at a time. Come on. Yes. Take, one, take the first percent, you, so you comment, this guy has a preamble which has like 200 lines. So then you, you, you identify the specific commands, because there's a problem with the commands that generate two lines, that run two lines. You're working on the power set of the number of, uh, of lines in your file. Yes. No, but, 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 but the results are impressively good because you do this and in general what happens is the file doesn't process. But you find that out very quickly. You know, a script can go through it very quickly and then you go and remove the second and remove the third and remove the fourth and remove the fifth and go until it processes. And most of the time when it processes, it processes and produces exactly the same PDF file. So I, what I classify those, those are operations which are, uh, you know, which are, literally an identity on top of the PDF. They do not change the PDF. You change the source, but the PDF is the same. You're commenting a lot, and the PDF is the same. This is not a part of the minimizer yet, the way it's released, but we're integrating it with the minimizer. The only problem is one is written in Perl, another one is written in Python, because of idiosyncrasies between the two guys that, that, that did the work. <laughs> and uh, so we're integrating the whole thing into Perl, and, uh, and the package is gonna be released, uh, the, you know, the particular routine is going to be released at one pro routine. And, and that was sort of mostly automatic. And what I, what, 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 the way I imagined this thing was sort of a container that, was, that had a lot of papers. All those papers were broken in four pieces. And they were sitting in these containers going through these operations that were not changing the content of the paper. And then from time to time, there will be an operation that will change the, the PDF file substantially, that you would not be able to compare with the PDF file before automatically. And then I would have to go there and check it or roughly check it. Roughly check is to check to see if it has the same number of pages, you know, roughly the same number of bytes and so forth. For example, when we took over to UTF-8, move everything to UTF-8 because it's amazingly impossible to do a synthetic analyzer or a speller or anything like this with this papers not in UTF-8, then the PDF would change substantially. So there was no way to compare automatically, but you could do a rough compare. And then if, the pass, if it passes the rough compare, we would move to this next container where you will go through the next operation and it will continue to live by itself on the next transformation, the next transformation, the next transformation. 
And that's basically how we carried it over uh, on the part of metadata, content, and preamble. And our leftover was only the bibliography. The bibliography went to do some really nice because the bibliography is a very useful part of a math paper, extremely useful part. You want to see people are doing the same thing, the references, you want to be able to click on the references quickly, locate the stuff, and uh, um, you know, people would, like us here, for example, that uh, use a lot, you know, the archive papers, you know, uh, we, we, we don't, uh, um, there are mathematicians, in fact, which have produced a paper, published it with the American Mathematical Society, and keep writing updates for the archive for that paper, so that the paper in the archive has a life beyond the paper which is published, and is way more useful than the paper that's published. So using the archive numbers on the paper and the archive links is a must these days for mathematics. So I so we went devised uh, no, so we start analyzing the biblio. The biblio problems fall in two categories. Um, first of all, is the guys that that give you bib, and the guys that give you BBL. And uh, the guys that give you bib, there's a problem. You know, the bib files are never never minimized. And there's this huge bibliography files that contain computer science papers and, you know, <laughs> geography papers, you know, sometimes <laughs> cooking manuals. And, and that's a, so you, you, you need to go there and automatically go there and clean it. But that is correct, not like in the preamble case. Cool. No, that's correct. And, and you, 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 you want to go there and you want to say thank you, but minimize it because you don't want to be adding DOI links to something that you're never going to use it. So minimizing, there are plenty of tools. I mean, if the guy, um, if you use BibTech, there's minimizing tools in BibTech ready for 20 years. And if you're using BibliaTech, BibliaTech has, also does a very beautiful job with a single command. BibliaTech itself does the minimization. You don't need any uh, outside scripts or anything like this. And then you end up with uh, a minimized bib file. And then if it does the BBL, we mathematicians are very lucky that we have uh, the AMS to do the work for us. And the AMS has this thing called MREF. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Um, MREF is, um, they came up with it at the end of the 90s. And, uh, and the day after, I, I, uh, it's, it's, it's a web page where you can put in a chunk of text and it gives you the BibTeX record for the, for, for the for the citation, be it whatever, book, thesis, whatever. If it's in the MS record, it gives you the BibTeX record. And, uh, and I, the day after I seen this thing, I wrote my very first script that would you know, take my files and, uh, and write complete bibliography files using the MRAF match. That was like 1998, 1999, I think. And uh, literally later, we passed through a, a bunch of changes, and uh, the script evolved quite a bit. And, uh, and uh, we used that for the BBL files in order to produce the BIB files. And uh, in the next container over, you have thrown the BBLs away, and you are dealing with the complete BIB files. So it's like, imagine you know, on the next container here, and you, it keeps on cooking and doing the same. Now, how we raise the level of usefulness of this BIP file is um, through this guy's here work. Um, he has a little tiny corner of uh, Tech Live hidden. I, I think he has a name, Cross Refware. Yeah. Cross Refware, which is which doesn't. It's not a good name um, because it doesn't really pay uh, duties to what it really does which is really, really good. Um, it, it really should be called the, the Publisher's Plumb Kit, <laughs> or the, the Publisher's Toolkit, or Plumb Kit. And, uh, and he has like a, a bunch of little stuff like that, uh, like bib uh, add, uh, bib add uh, MR, <coughs> which, is, which takes your bibliography entry in your bibliography file and adds the math review number for, to it. There is a, a bib add uh, um, DOI, and there is a bib add um, uh, ZBL, yeah, ZBL for Zentral Blot. 
And, um, and it does a beautiful thing that I have never spent the time to do it, which it does the whole thing by parsing the file using a pro library, which I didn't have back in 1998, and uh, never learned how to use one properly, especially in Perl. And, uh, and I took the time to read his program, learn how to do it, and mimicked it in many other ones. And I went on to add, add URL, and, uh, and many other ones, like add archive, and, and so forth and so forth. And uh, not only that, but we also did a few things that, uh, that we did in our program back in 98, which uh, Boris didn't have in his toolkit, which was the first was a check. So, for example, one thing that we do when we do this match, when you, when you take like a BBL entry, which is jumbled up, you know, all jumbled up, and, uh, and you match it against MREF, you sometimes get a DOI back. You sometimes get an URL back. But you have a full entry. When you are dealing with a BIP file, you have entry for the pages. And the pages are equal, like, say, 316 to 325, dash, dash. And, uh, and what we did is we followed that URL, or we followed the DOI, and we checked to see if the 316 was part of that URL. Because sometimes the match from given you by the MS is bad. The MS is, uh, provides matches which are not good and you end up with a record which is unreliable. But if you take the record, take the BibTech record, take the Bib record that you have in here, and if it has a page number, you know, you can have a BibTech record which is given you by MREF or which is given you by the author. And that has the beginning page, 316. And then you check to see if the URL that's been given to you contains that page number. In general, it's a 99.99% .99 of a valid and positive match. So we want on his routine, and we add that check to, the, to his routine. So on the version that I have running in my machine right now, I have a, one additional flag, dash page check. Mm -hmm. And uh, you cannot use the second page, the 325. I don't know if you know why. <laughs> but, uh, because of astrophysics. Yeah, well, astrophysics suffer from the same thing. Ma uh, mathematicians, when they're sight, they're a little bit careless, and they don't check exactly what is the end page of the paper. And uh, so they, in general, look what's the beginning page of the next paper, and they write the number before. So, if then they, so they go on the, on the, on the list of, uh, of, 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 on the index of the journal. If the next page starts at 326, they cite as the ending page of the previous paper as being 325, which is sometimes right, sometimes not right. So we also check to see if this number is plus or minus one within, uh, if plus or minus one, this number is part of, a part of the web page. And if it is, then we accept it and we move on. Go ahead. I, I would write something like a Bayesian uh, estimator uh, to, for this ambiguation uh, based on things like this. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to write Bayesian filter, which would be much more uh, effective. effective. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did this uh, for another task in Bayesian predictors for paper disambiguation. You give you something like 99 point uh -huh. accuracy. Uh huh. Cool. I want to hear about that, and I also want to hear about if anybody would have. I mean, there are BBL records which AMS does not provide any match whatsoever, but the BBL record is extremely well behaved, extremely well organized. Let's talk about the offline. Right, and, and so uh, the, if, if anyone would have some, some AI ideas okay. on how to okay. do it. I know the answer to this question, but it's long. Okay, cool, cool. This is the part that it is not resolved, and I did it by, I, we did it by hand, and that, is, that was not as good. But you know, all, all, those, all those tools are sort of you know, getting ready to be distributed. And we added the DOI, we added the ZBL, the central blat number, we add the URL, if they had one with all the DOI. We add the archive numbers for every paper that we could find. And, uh, and it is probably, 
in, in, my, in my view, is the richest bibliography I have ever seen in mathematics in terms of resource for somebody that wants to explore the paper. And uh, the thing has just been printed in Singapore because uh, printing in Singapore is cost half of the money printing in here in Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> <laughs> it's printed in Singapore. Huh? It's handled in Singapore. It's pr handled in Singapore, yeah. I it's, pr it's, prob it's, it's prob much. I probably don't want to know where, where is it printed, but... <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but, but basically, yeah, but basically this idea of, of, of this container, as I said, you know, this, this idea, you know, the, the paper stays floating in this container doing transformations which do not change the PDF file. And then you have to watch only when you go through a transformation that changes it in significant ways. So, for example, this BBL to BIB would be one of those transformations, you know, kind of right here. Uh, BBL to BIB that we would sort of have to watch. But the rough watcher, you know, the watcher that goes in there, looks at the PDF file, and checks to see if it has the same number of pages is a very good uh, rule for, in a paper that you have like 35 pages, if, you, if you're missing something, like if, if the bibliographies are not resolved, that thing almost changes the number of pages to 34. You lose albums to two pages, especially when I have a citation which is this big. So lots of things are picked up automatically in, in this particular way. And then inside the container, when you're doing these transformations that do not change the PDF, you let it happen and let it happen. And then hopefully you pick it up at the very far end and deal with only with the proofs and the hard problems that you have to deal with hand by hand. So we trying to take a lot of the stuff that we developed for this one and make it a part of a, uh, an open source production um, production tool that will be available for people in general because Knuth gave us tech but didn't give us a production tool and uh, <laughs> so dealing with more than one paper in tech it is a little bit more problematic than dealing with only one and uh, to be honest with you uh, Boris stuff does a little bit more than that you know Boris stuff uh, goes in it, it really goes into crossref it really goes into crossref stuff, which uh, we have not dealt with because um, you know the publisher forbade us from from going into it, and uh, so um, so we, we we went only in the beginner part of it. Uh, oh yeah, we added another thing too. It's like um, using MREF for over twenty years, I think. You know, twenty years of using MREF. Uh, the AMS database contains a number of errors. Contains a huge number of errors, and the errors that they sort of refuse to fix. Some errors which are really stupid, you know, like a, a volume four which is written volume five and should be volume four, and, they, and even if you complain them in writing, they don't fix it in the database because it's written in the math reviews book. And, uh, but, uh, uh, we know a lot of that, and I know, we know also a lot about a lot of errors that they use when citing in proceedings, and they classify the name of the editors in the proceedings as authors, and things like this, which are not, you know, in a world of BibliTech, you're not supposed to do that anymore. In BibTech, maybe, you know, maybe it was a simplified version of a style in BibTech, it was acceptable to have an in proceedings editor listed as an author, but not in a world where you go a little bit finer on top of the bibliography. So then we also process it through um, an internal file which fix AMS, error, AMS database errors. And, uh, and, you know, and right, that, right after that, you have this beautiful collection. You just can uh, join all the PDFs and have the book and send them down to Singapore. Thank you. Uh, I will. I thought that I, I will answer this question later, but then understood that some people in the audience and watching YouTube might want to know this answer: how to make a beep from BBL. So I decided to uh, answer this question. And um, the answer is that, of course, if you have, if you know the beep style, you can easily do it because you you can basically put. Uh, your hamburger back into the cow. It's much more difficult when you don't have the style. 
And I have built just on a conference, JCDL, Joint Conference on Digital Libraries, where people try to do exactly this. They had a typeset citation, not just BBL, but typeset citation, even hard copy. So they had just pixels, and they tried to parse it and to get um, BIP tech file. Mm -hmm. And they were able to do it by training artificial intelligence by machine learning methods. And uh, it was very nice. They needed a lot of examples. And here is how tech, and actually Bip Tech and Nelson's files were uh, very helpful. Because what I told them to do is to take Nelson's database, mm -hmm. typeset with a lot of different Bip Tech uh, styles, uh -huh. and get a lot of training for the artificial uh, intelligence machine. And after they did this, uh, they, uh, they say that they are going to have very good uh, system which takes typeset citation and gives you, a <coughs> it's right not just hamburger, it's eaten hamburger from which they recover the cow. It's okay. amazing. <laughs> it's, is, is this open source? Is it going to be open uh, source? Uh, their paper is open source. Uh, it's in the JCDL proceedings. I can uh, send you a copy. And they are creating this system. It's, it, it, it's very interesting uh, yeah. uh, kind of work. But it requires a lot of computing. It requires a huge computing with neural networks and all this stuff. I, 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 should, I should add one remark here. I don't want to pass the idea that, that this is very simple and can be done very simple. There are papers in here that required a lot of, a lot of massa massage and a lot of things. There are papers which I have not read a single line out of it. <laughs> and they have been processed by the system, and the author said, this is great. Sure. I would say less than 30% on that category. That zero. Yeah. Even more concrete. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 would say, I would say, you know, something on the other 10, 15% of the papers are stuff that I have not read a single line. And the author read the proofs. And the author said, this is great. This, you know, just publish it the way it is. The idea is, is to build an automated journal processing where you really can have, you know, something where uh, if the quality of the English is good and the quality of the math is good, you can stay out of the process and do it more automatically. I guess I'm intrigued, as you're not a publisher, and to me this is kind of like a book of abstract, that you're going to this amount of effort, because certainly, probably more of a comment, in my subject area, people send in abstracts, and provided they fit inside the margins and you can put the page numbers on, that's all you do. <laughs> you know, basically, because that's their business. It's not the same, you know, so to me it's an interesting, but slightly strange concept. Yeah, but do, do they it's have... Like the it's a comment. It's not yeah, okay. Yeah, do they have the richness of... Uh, no, uh, no, because we... A, yeah. a conference abstract to me is one page. Right, right. Yeah. See, the, the, the conference is a very special conference. Was, the number of people attending is absolutely huge. And the number of talks is, is on this order, 280 talks, um, 280 talks of an hour or more. But there are about 2,000 talks of 15 minutes each. So just handling that in, by itself is a huge amount. So these people which are talking 15 minutes, they're not getting anything more than just half a page of an abstract. That's it. Um, you, you spoke a lot about sort of post-verification in terms of comparing PDF and stuff. Right. Uh, you, there is something like a tech transcript file is have you been ever using the uh, content of that as a verification of something gone wrong? Or is this complete, completely sort of uh, only on the level of comparing some PDF to some other PDF? Well, I mean, the, the tool that we have developed has uh, three levels of comparison of the PDF file. And uh, one of them is if the two, because of this issue was Tech Live 2017, let's take it away from that. You know, hope, hopefully that's gone. And then we reduce it to two levels. One is if the PDF files are exactly the same, except for the date of generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my question is more something like, uh, okay, if the author made a mistype and the original PDF file that has a non-resolved um, reference, right. LaTeX would tell you unresolved reference in right. the transcript file. Right, right. Uh, it will still be... 100% match because you will be also having an unresolved right, reference. Right. So are you no, in no, your process ever using actually the log file of, of, of the stuff and say looking for extreme 
overflow boxes. Right. Or no, no, we, are, we, we, we parse in the log files, you know, the tools, the set of tools that parse the log files and also parse, you know, the PDF files for double question marks because lots of those things, <laughs> lots of those things are followed by double question marks. <laughs> so we, we parse both. And, uh, and the idea is, um, is, the idea is that we, we build a tool, you know, a web tool, and uh, one of our problems is how to make this web tool available to other people. But we build a web tool that reports it back to you. So like if you have the text in there, it reports back to you. I said this, you have an unresolved reference on page 17, you have whatever, on you know, and reports you the dangerous problem so that you can address it right there. It reports on other things too. It reports on people using neighborhood and neighborhood in the same paper, which is something that's not really desirable, or, or color and color in the same paper. And so we... <laughs> and uh, and it does that by using you know yet another 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 little applet that you know that uh, takes you know two words and compute the distance in between two words by um, you know uh, di distance transformation between the two words and when the distance is um, I think it's when you take the quotient na number of uh, number of changes in between going from one word to another divided by the length of the word. And if that is bigger than 0 0.17, the chances of one of them being a misspelled of the other is huge, like over 95%. And uh, huh? 0 0.17, 0 0.17, yeah? If it's 17%, so this is, this is, called, uh, this is called percent Levenstein. So for example, the word color and the word color uh, have a distance of one. So you divide one by one, two, three, four, five is one over five, yeah. and, uh, and that's what's called percentage Levenstein. Yeah, there's uh, a class of Levenstein usually. Yeah. Explain. This particular one is one that I introduced in, in study of graph theory back in 1980, 1985. And, but it does really great stuff for yeah. distance in between words. <laughs> so if you have, it's very quick to go through a file and compute the distance in between two words on the same, on, on the same file, very quickly. You can do that with pro in seconds. Yeah. And, uh, and the, if the distance, the percentage Levenstein is, is smaller than something, it's almost, almost always is a, is a misprint. It's easier to, to use that than to use a speller. Yeah. It picks more errors than a speller. <coughs> and, uh, Unless you're yeah. <laughs> for, for an average user. <laughs> I was just wondering what were the other two levels that you use for PDF comparison? Oh, oh, so the other PDF comparison is one that it takes the image of the PDF and compares the, you know, it really will render the PDF into a JPEG, you know, page by page and computes the distance in between the two PDFs. Um, so you may have something like a, 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 a bad line, a, a wrong line break or, or, or something that you know, didn't break very well. And we use that for continual pre-processing of things. So it's like if you, if you have a file and the file is going through this change and this change and this change, you wanna know how much that is changing on, on, on visually on the file. Because this is, this is 6,000 pages. This is, you processing this file, if in production you in general process this file like 100 times. So 6,000 times 100, there is no way that a human being can watch this, this process happen. So you wanna be told when something ch changed substantially on the file. From when we had to do an upgrade in Tech Live in the middle of the process. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say. Sorry, because you said you know, there were two, three levels. No, no, there were three levels, there, there was you one. You were comparing lives except for the date of generation? No, there was, it w there was one that was necessary for oh, Tech, li Tech Live 17. Oh, okay. Because Tech Life 17 introduced this thing, so you, you need to take the fonts out. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the really interesting talk uh, inside the sausage factory to sort of use the <laughs> more, more meat related analogies. I'm sorry if I missed it in your discussion. I can see the academic merit for trying to reduce a, let's say, a user has 200 definitions they don't use in their preamble. Uh -huh. what's, the, what's the practical benefit? 
the practical benefits you have to deal with it. You know, you have to process that thing and you have to find out where the errors are. You know, we, you, have, you, you have a file that, you know, that something happened wrong, you know. Some, you know, you have a calligraphic symbol. It's like a common complaint in mathematics. I have my calligraphic symbol and got substituted by this, you know, mass SF or whatever, you know. I have my own set of fonts, you know. We do not use computer modern. We use, uh, you know, there was a choice of two font sets. One is uh, MT Pro 2, uh, Math Time Professional 2, and another one was Minion Math, Minion plus Minion Math. And those were sort of, you know, the, the, the end runners at the final choice of fonts. And then we, we showed a bunch of uh, sort of few papers, you know, typeset on the, to a few people, and, and the, the choice was to use MT Pro 2. Uh, the choice of MT Pro 2 carries a lot of consequences, especially in, like, in the stuff like calligraphic, you know, bold italic, bold math, and so forth. So you end up changing people's files in a substantial way. So, um, so when you change something like this and the guy complains, you have to go and you have to find out what's wrong and so forth. And you don't want to be dealing with a, with a preamble, which is huge, mingusly huge, you don't understand it, and you have five minutes to find what the problem is, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, b I believe we're out of time, so I think if anyone wants to, to ask all about, about the process, we can, we can talk to him during the break. So thank you again, Paul. Thank you. Again. Yeah. So I'm unable to give my talk now, I think.